So it talks about lots of ideas, and there's all these different technologies floating out there. And these are all those logos in the background are some of the millions of these weird kind of Web 2.0 kind of sites that are out there, and all the all the buzzwords like YouTube and, and Twitter. But the question is, where do you start? Do we think, oh my God, Twitter's the latest greatest thing? We need to have a Twitter strategy. What are we going to do about it? So I wanted to give you some advice about how to approach all this. And it's actually not as, as, as scary as it might first seem. The most common mistake people make, and particularly after you come to an event like this and you hear someone like me rabbit on for a bit about how brilliant Twitter is, and they put the technology first. They say, we need to do something in YouTube. We need to do something in, in Twitter. But really, the technology comes, comes much later on. And the place to start is around the people. So the first thing to do is, is to look at your target audience. And you know, anyone who's been trained in marketing will know that this is the, always the first thing you do, is to understand the, the customer. So the things you want to look at are things like the age of your target audience. We saw from the stats earlier on like the big difference between the general internet population of the UK and their use of social media and the really young people in the 18 to 24, in the 18 to 24 age group. They, they have different uses of social media. So if you're building something for the over 55s, and, and Stannis Dairlifts are one, one of our clients, you'll find it's, you're going to struggle a lot for, with a social media strategy to engage those people because their uptake of these kind of tools isn't actually that great. So understand what kind of use of social media your target audience are ready for and also whereabouts they're doing it. So the web has changed your, the, the experience of a company's web presence. So it's not just about driving everyone to your site. It's about reaching out to find where people are already having conversations, maybe on other blogs like the mobile industry review site we looked at a moment ago, maybe in forums or groups inside Facebook. Understand where that stuff's happening because you might, you might then engage with people where they are rather than expecting them to come to you. The first thing you can do with social media is to, is to listen. And so we looked at the Avis case study where they used social media to understand what people thought about them. And there are some really great free tools that you can use if you're interested in, in trying this stuff out. So this is something called Addictomatic. And what it allows you to do is to type in a keyword and it will show you where that keyword is being talked about in social media. So we could, put, we could put Blendtec in there, and we could find videos on YouTube that mention Blendtec. We could find posts on Twitter. Uh, we, can find, we can search blogs. We can search Dig and Flickr and so-and-so. The list goes on. So this is a really handy tool, and it's completely free to use. You can also do, do a Twitter search. So this was a search I did for Belfast yesterday. And what I love about a Twitter search is it's, it's like kind of tuning into conversations that are going on in pubs. So people are just talking to, it, to each other, but in a semi-public space. And so as soon as we search for Belfast, we can say what people are, what people are, we can see what people are saying about it. And Google Alerts. Anyone here using Google Alerts? Hopefully some. Yeah, brilliant. So Google Alerts, again, is free and it's really easy and it allows you to, to track what people are saying about you. So basically how it works is it's just like a Google search. You type in what you're interested in, which might be your company name, and then every day Google will perform a search for those keywords and it will email you the, it'll email you the results. The next objective that social media can help you with is dialogue. So that's when you don't just want to listen, but you actually want to talk back to people. So right from the, uh, the, the, the cafe in central Brighton that wants to actually have a dialogue with its customers through to much larger companies like, like Zappos who are having an ongoing dialogue with their, with their customers. Social media can help you with that. So that might be an objective that you set yourself. Energize, Mr. Motivator. So what this is all about is using this connectedness and all of these people who are online talking, about, talking to each other, trying to harness that to get your message out there and to get them to help you. And so we've been lucky enough to have like my favorite case study that I normally talk about, which is Blendtec. Actually, actually presenting today. So what Blendtec have done is they have energised all the people that love great content online and love forwarding, forwarding things to their friends, and they've just fed them with something really, really cool. And then those people have gone off and actually done the work for them of spreading the message about Blendtec. And you've seen how incredibly effective that's been. But this is also about the ratings and reviews on the, on the site. So we looked at eBags earlier, and what they've done is they've energised people who just... There's a human instinct. People like telling other people about things that they've bought and about what they liked and what they didn't like. Because it feels quite empowering, doesn't it, when you buy something really great to tell other people that it was great, or if you bought something that was horrible to, to warn off other people as well. So you can harness these things too. 
You can use social media as a form of access for your, for your company. So people don't always have to come to you. You can actually go to them. And so um, the good example of that was Comcast in the States using, using Twitter for, for customer service. They're not relying on people going to the Comcast site. They're thinking, you know what, sometimes a customer might be really pissed off with us, but all they're going to do is tell all their friends on Twitter. And so if you can go to them and be present in the places that they are, then you can actually help, then you can actually help them out. And then finally, like the sort of the kind of the pinnacle of all of this is what we call deep engagement. Uh, and this is when you go skipping off into the sunset with your, with your customer hand in hand. And that's when you actually use social media to invite customers into the process of, of developing your, your products and services and actually running the company. So it's a really open way of interacting with customers. And so things like Dell Ideastorm are just starting to explore this kind, of, this kind of area. And so it might be an objective that you set for your business to think, how can we really involve our customers in, in what we do? So, so we've talked about how the foundation is understanding people and understanding what your target audience are ready for. And we've talked about setting some objectives. And then once you've done that, you can then start to put in place a strategy. So you might at that point say, well, we want to energise people, so we're going to do a viral campaign and see if we can do what, what George has done with, with Will It Blend, or we might add ratings and reviews onto the site. And then finally, the last step in the process is actually to pick the technologies. So always follow through in this, in this, in this order. Don't start, don't start with, the, with the technology first. So there are a few rules of the game. These are the things to always keep in mind when you're actually starting to engage with people on social media. And hopefully you'll see some themes emerging, because I think all of the speakers have been touching on some of these points today. Be authentic, because what we're talking about here is human conversations. People don't want you to, be, to pretend to be someone that you're, that you're not. They want you to talk in a natural human voice. We have to drop the kind of the corporate speak and we have to start speaking naturally as, as, as humans. We have to be transparent. So that means we have to be very clear about who we are. So we don't go onto a, a reviews page and pretend that we're a really, really happy customer who thinks the product's five out of five because people will see through it. It just instantly looks fake. We were trained through million years, millions of years of evolution to spot a fraud and people are very, very good at it. Be useful to people. See how you can add value in these communities. So the last thing anyone wants is someone to jump into a conversation and start flogging them something. So think how you can be a part of a conversation in a useful way. Answer people's questions. Help them out. If you look at the examples of the, of the cafe or of Comcast using it for, for customer support, they're just trying to be useful and helpful to people. Being remarkable, that's probably the hardest one to kind of kind of capture the magic, and, and a company like Blendtec have, have done it, but think how you can do something really new and, in, and incredible. Pull, don't push. We've talked a lot about that today. So this is permission marketing, being there for when people want you, rather than always trying to force your message upon other people. And then finally, be brave. This is still a relatively new area. It's not quite so tried and tested as, as pay-per-click or, or email marketing, but there are companies having massive successes with this. And if you do follow these rules and go into it with the, with the right intentions and you set yourself clear objectives and you, and you think about a strategy first, then there's no reason why any business here can't make a success of social media.